1764, William Tryon was appointed Lieutenant Governor of the North Carolina Colony. He, his wife, and young daughter moved from England to North Carolina to take up the post. Three years later, in 1767, Governor Tryon paid his first visit to Pythabora. He arrived with his wife and an entourage of other gentlemen, including counselors, colonels, and a reverend from Hillsborough. They were greeted with the sounds of the French horn and trumpets, and escorted to their lodgings in the tailor's house. Dinner was served in the worship hall of the single brother's house and was also accompanied by music. After dinner, Lady Tryon visited with the Moravian women while Governor Tryon toured the stable, farm, brewery, and cattle yard. The next day they visited the building site of Salem before returning to Pythabra to look at the pottery and mill, then visiting Bethania. The next day they attended church services and Lady Tryon spent the afternoon playing the organ. When some of the Moravian girls joined her to sing along, she was greatly pleased, so much so that she called her husband in so he could hear them as well. She had them come back later and sing to her in German. Governor Tryon toured every house from top to cellar and asked a lot of questions about living arrangements and how the finances were kept with the communal housekeeping. He was pleased with the answers he received and both he and Lady Tryon seemed impressed with the Moravian settlements in Wachovia. Before they took their leave, they ordered, quote, a windmill, 478 pounds of candles, 150 pounds of butter, six beehives, and a new gun, which the Moravians delivered to the governor once the order was filled. It took about a month. Others living in North Carolina didn't welcome Governor Tryon as warmly as the Moravians did. Tryon's decision to build his palace and charge colonists for the expense didn't exactly engender good feelings toward him. The royal government's presence in North Carolina had caused growing unrest even before Tryon arrived. During that time, a group known as the Regulators formed, who wished to regulate their own affairs and no longer deal with the royal government with its excessive fees and other mistreatments. Most of the Regulators were located in the back country of North Carolina. In 1771, the Moravians had several unfriendly encounters with regulators as they stayed in the Pythabra Tavern on their way to Hillsboro to air their grievances with Governor Tryon. Once they got there, he refused to listen to them unless they laid down their arms and dispersed. When they did not do so and refused to leave, he threatened to open fire on them. What resulted was the Battle of Alamance, in which Governor Tryon's troops squelched the regulator movement. With most of its leaders killed, Tryon told those who remained that he would offer pardons to them as long as they swore an oath of loyalty to the crown. That leads us back to Bethabara. Governor Tryon and his troops arrived in the Piedmont, where many regulators lived, to issue pardons. Governor Tryon remembered the Moravians fondly from his first trip. He confided to one Moravian that it had been proposed that he, quote, should send a company of light horse to Bethabara and burn it, but he had not consented, for he had not found the Moravians to be disloyal in any respect. He arrived in the town on June 4, 1771, camping in the square while his troops and their prisoners camped in a field nearby. 135 neighbors came and swore the loyalty oath to Governor Tryon while he was there. On June 5th, 30 prisoners were brought in, including some of Bethabra's neighbors, many of whom begged the Moravians for a good word with the governor. The brethren were hesitant to do so, claiming to have no influence over the governor. That evening, Governor Tryon attended a Singston Day, or a Moravian music service, remembering how much he enjoyed the music on his first visit. On the occasion of the king's birthday, a few of the brethren presented a proclamation to the governor professing their continued allegiance to the royal governor and the king. The governor celebrated the king's birthday by setting off rockets in the Pythabra Square. Governor Tryon departed on June 9th, giving a fond farewell to the Moravians, with the record stating that his face showed as much emotion as if he were saying goodbye to his own family. He asked if he could repay the Moravians for what his troops used, but they refused. It would be the last time they would see each other, as soon after, Governor Tryon was appointed governor of New York and left North Carolina.